it's now time to upgrade my Dell Precision. I already did one upgrade, which I'll go over in a little bit, but this upgrade is a CPU upgrade. I'm upgrading from this six core 12 thread processor to this 12 core 24 thread processor. This should give me a significant performance uplift just in general overall usage and gaming and whatnot. But before all that, I need to do some type of performance uh, measurement before and after, so I need to get Sandbench installed. I completely forget how YouTubers tend to do this, so I think I'm going to start off with the single core. It's going to take a bit. Ew, it's going to take 9 minutes. Ouch. Well, 10 minutes. I'll come back when it's done. Single core is fairly pitiful. Now to run the multi-core. It is also going to take uh, 10 minutes to do, apparently. Lovely. All right, and the multi-core is done. 4,000, whatever. So hopefully the new processor should bump the performance up significantly. Especially considering the processor is currently in here is from 2014, while the new one right here is from 2016. And for simple game benchmarking, I'm just going to be using Hogwarts Legacy. I'm not going to have any of the special stats like I don't know what Spalding has up because that's not what this video is about. But as you currently see, I get about 50 or so FPS. If I start walking around, it goes into the 40s. So the game has a hard time running on my current on the computer currently, and that's more than likely due to the processor. So with that said, now to do the processor swap and see if I get any performance uplift. Again, theoretically, I should. All right, here is the new processor, which you really can't see. Now, when it comes to upgrades I've already done to this computer, I put one of my two terabyte drives in here, so I have four terabytes of mechanical. I got a M.2 to NVMe adapter, and I have a one terabyte boot drive installed. So I have a total of uh, five terabytes of storage. I plan on eventually upgrading the RAM to 32 or 64 gigs. And I'm going to have RAM here, and I'm going to RAM here, and I'm going to have another CPU here. And this CPU here should work, so if it does, I'm going to buy another one from the exact same vendor on eBay. And pop another one down here. I also have to buy uh, a cooler for the second slot and whatnot. But uh, first things first, I need to see if this CPU even works. The BIOS on the computer is up to date, so I don't see why it wouldn't. But uh, you never know. More than likely complete overkill, but I never like uh, thermal pasting these uh, big IHSs, so I kind of go overkill. It hasn't done anything yet to uh, impact performance, but uh, still. All right, everything's plugged back in. Let's turn the system on and see what it does. Now it will take a little bit for it to actually display an image. It's just the way this thing designed. So I'll just uh, come back when it actually displays an image. All right, and now it's displaying an image, which means it was just a simple uh, upgrade. 15 bucks and I got myself a better processor, hopefully. All right, and just like that, it is now fully showing up as it should. I'm quite happy to see it actually worked right out of the gate. I didn't have to do any weird anything for it to function. I just popped it into the socket and it just started working. So I'm gonna make sure there's no drivers or whatnot to install. Once I get all that done, then I'll uh, rerun Senebench and Hogwarts. Got a bunch of optional updates right here, if I can get the mouse to scroll. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to download Intel Support Assistant and have it do it automatically. That way so I can have the most up-to-date then again, generally speaking, these tend to be up to date, but I want to run it through Intel, so I'm going to do that. All right, so nothing on Intel side, so it looks like those updates are all directly from uh, Windows themselves. So I'll just download them and whatnot and uh, come back when I uh, go to run Cinebench. All right, time to run the benchmark again. Still going to take 10 minutes apparently. So I'll come back. Interesting, the single core is uh, quite a few points lower. Let's see what the multi core uh, does. The multi core is 4,000 something, so hopefully it'll be 5,000 something. 
So I'll just come back like last time and yeah. Oh, that's going by a lot more quicker. Multicore has a significant boost in performance. So hopefully that'll also improve my gaming performance. Well, the performance is definitely noticeable. It's now at 60. Now it still struggles from time to time, but it's not going down as bad as it was. And again, I'm just moving my mouse right now. And it still struggles from time to time. So let's see what happens when I actually walk around again like last time. So even though it does struggle from time to time, it's definitely not going down as bad as it used to. Now with that said, when it comes to my secondary rig here, I actually tend to play Sea of Thieves on it. So if uh, Hogwarts Legacy has a performance uplift like this, Sea of Thieves should perform even better. Alright, just spawned in. And I can already tell right out of the gate, I'm maintaining significantly higher FPS now. I remember just spawning into the uh, cabin or whatever we call this thing, where I'll be getting in the 60s of 40s. And yet now I'm maintaining 100 or so FPS, which is what I expect from my 750 Ti. And if I walk outside, I maintain an even higher FPS. It stays above 60 FPS, which is exactly what I want. So a $15 upgrade is all I need to make this computer far more capable with my uh, 3070. So with that said, I'll finish downloading all the other games I want to do a uh, full video on to actually show what this thing can do. And then I'll get that video uploaded. I also want to end the video on this one little update right here about the previous video. I uploaded another video yesterday on a uh, Samsung phone I bought and how when I went to close the screen or lock it, audio completely shot the bed basically. Well, I got myself another phone now. This one's a blue phone and even though it's generally the same exact phone, this one's actually quite a bit more snappier, has more storage, and when I actually play music and uh, lock the screen, it continues playing the music completely fine. So when it comes to uh, that, that Samsung phone, I actually am letting my mother use it because she wants to see what Android is like because she's using an iPhone. I doubt it will be enough to get her to change over to Android, but at least it gives her something to uh, see what Android is like.